Hey everyone, welcome to another episode and today we're going to be talking about displaying images onto the client or perhaps downloading them. Okay, so I have a simple project set up here. Um, we're not going to be, I'm not going to be doing any coding. I'm just going to be stepping over over, over what I've done. And uh, uh, some of, if you have been using .NET Core and you've been working with files before, uh, it's going to look familiar. If not, then hopefully you'll probably learn something. So in program.cs, uh, I have nothing uh, uh, too funky going on, uh, business as usual. Then I have my startup file. All I'm doing is I have the MVC edit and I am adding a singleton service, a file manager. So this is going to be persisted throughout the lifetime of my application. So once it shuts down, this gets reset. Okay, other than that, I'm using static files and MVC. Okay, so first thing is i have just one controller it's the home controller and here i am uh, injecting my file manager and then i'm going to be using it okay so in my index page all i'm doing is displaying the page and i'm passing in some files we'll get to the file manager in just a second and then i have a post action where i'm posting a file which is iform file which is basically if you watch my video on how to upload files you will know what that is we go ahead and save that file in File Manager. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at it. Now, File Manager has a constructor, uh, which uh, from, dependency, from the dependency injection container, we get our hosting environment, which is then used to basically get the path to the www root folder. Okay, and this is part of the .NET Core framework. And then I'm initiating my list of files and my object for files is just an ID, uh, width, uh, relative path, and global path. Global path is basically path on disk. Relative path is path in the www root folder. So if it's going to be in the root of www root, it's just going to be slash file name. Okay. So I have this constru constructor, which so I can use the environment, and I have uh, I'm initiating my files list. I also have an ID, which basically, if you if you would save these to the database, you'd have an automatic ID generation. This is just something I'm due to cover that functionality. Uh, image sizes, I will get to that once we get to the advanced section, but I have some simple uh, getter methods. So essentially, I'm, I just want to get a file by ID, or I want to get a file by ID and its width, or I want to just get all files. And uh, this is something else. Again, we'll get to that later. So save file. This is how I choose to save my files. This is uh, this method basically goes ahead and generates a random name. So this function right here, which we basically say image. If we pass in a prefix, that's what, is, uh, what it's going to get underscore. And then I take the current date time uh, and I make make it into a string. And then I say dot png. Right. If you are uploading uh, PDFs, whatnot, you want, might want to basically do file name dot in last index of dot and then get the last letters from that index but we're not doing that here so there here i am uh generating this random name and then i get the web root path from my environment i have the save path and all i'm doing i'm saving the file and once the file is saved i go ahead and add it to my file list and when i call get id all it's doing is returning this id and incrementing it by one after that. So what is this application about? This application is about displaying files. So let's go to the index page. And the first thing I wanna do is go over the most simple way that you can display a file. Here are my applications loading up. Okay, so simple file display, I go ahead, I choose a file, and then I submit it. Okay, and there it is, it's displayed. Now, what's happening here, this relative path right here, is if we go into the file manager and let's say I want to put a breakpoint right here where I'm getting all the files and I'll refresh the page. We will see that if I go into my files list, the relative path is slash and the image name, right? So the image resides in the www root folder and whatever folders you might store it under, whatever its relative path in the www root folder, that's what you want to pass in to the source of the image. And that's just going to be displayed, okay? So 
this is essentially equivalent of uh, just having static files. So you can take whatever root this is and basically append it to the current URL and you will get the same image all right, displayed. So let me remove this breakpoint. And this is essentially, this is the simplest thing you can do. You upload a file, relative path in your WW root folder, display it, make sure that in your um, startup, you have use static files enabled and then you're good, okay? So that's all this is doing. Now, there's a lot of things that you might want to do if your application is going to be growing in complexity or rather not complexity, it's going to grow in features, right? So you're going to add more features to it because uh, you want your application to be rich, all right? So uh, then it's going to get to a more complicated example. So let's go ahead into the advanced page. Now, uh, the advanced section, uh, I'm doing essentially, first I'm doing the same thing, but I'm getting optimized images. And what optimized images is, is basically where I set the width. All right, so for these files, I do not set the width, so I don't want them here. And then all I'm doing is selecting an ID for the image because what I'm doing when I'm saving these files here and uh, save file optimized, um, I'm using some image processing. Uh, this is a photo source stop magic source, I think it's called. I'll clarify that in a second. Uh, basically, uh, oh yeah, there we go, photo source magic scaler. What this does is I'm specifying some settings and then I have a list of image sizes that I would like my uh, would like it to convert my images to, okay? And then I'm going through these image sizes and I'm uh, saving them all to the same ID, all right? So this would be the same as an object with an ID and then it has a bunch of images, right? So I just want to get it, simulate that uh, functionality of getting a post with many images, all right? So all I'm doing is basically getting a bunch of IDs. So instead of a list of files, this is a list of IDs. Let me drop this guy now. Uh, so yeah, when I save a file, I create, I make sure I save the width and I and uh, I pass in the ID. Okay. So what this will allow me to do is when I get to my advanced page, let's go here, is do some JavaScript stuff, and uh, then basically get the image based on the width of the viewport, all right? So what I'm doing here, this is where I save it. So not much different from the previous method, but these two ones are different. So get image, I'm accepting an ID and the width, and then I'm getting the image stream. And the way I'm doing this is, first I wanna get a file, right? So this is a, this uh, what's it called uh, method here so all i'm doing is passing an id and width and it's trying to get a file based on that okay and uh, first i try to find the best width right and the way i do that is i basically I scroll through the available image sizes that i might have saved it in and if uh, the width that i pass is equal or smaller than the width that i want to select so basically i'm selecting the next biggest image, all right, that fits it. So I don't want to stretch my image, I want to scale it down on my browser, all right? So you might think about it differently, you might have different sizes, you might have like a thousand sizes to fit all screens. This is just an example. And then basically if you can't find one, just give it the biggest one. So that's what I, what I what's happening here. So once I found the best width, I go ahead and get the file with that width. And I just grab the global path. And then all I'm doing is I'm uh, returning a new stream with that path and returning a file stream result. So what the file stream result is basically a bunch of bytes. All right. And uh, th that is uh, enclosed in this uh, HTTP response. And uh, we have the MIME here, which you can specify .png, slash .png, slash .jpg, .j2, whatever. So after I have uploaded the file, I'm getting my IDs and I'm going to be storing my ID to the image. All right. So once my application is loaded, I am executing this JavaScript. So quickly step over. I'm getting all my image elements that have the data image attribute. Okay. And then I want to set the images. So at the point of loading the application, we're going to know the viewport height. 
sorry, width. And this is when I basically say window, get inner width, right? And then I want to construct the base URL. So origin is going to be HTTP slash, uh, colon slash slash uh, URL. And then I want to go to the address of my action. So slash home slash image. And then for each of my images, I want to grab the element and I'm going to get the attribute data image. All right. And this is where I just basically I can get the ID that is basically the ID of the image that is attached to this image element. All right. So once I have the ID, I then attach it to the base URL. So because uh, I'm not passing these in a route, I could then instead of a question mark and the and sign, I would be using just slashes. All right, so I basically, I attach the ID and the width to the route. So the width, again, is coming from the viewport of the window. And there I get my image URL, right? So uh, the width can either be like 300, 320, uh, 400, whatever. Uh, it doesn't matter because the way I'm getting the image here is I'm basically, this might be 300, 400, but I'm looking for it to be the next biggest, all right? So if it's 500, it's going to return the 640. If it's 300, it's going to return the 448. If it's uh, one uh, 1.5K, then it's going to return the biggest one. If, and if it's zero, it's just going to return the biggest. Okay. So again, coming back, uh, once uh, the image URL is set, I go ahead and set it to the element, right? So once the application is loaded, that's when I determine the URLs for the images. And once the uh, URL is assigned to the image, that's when the image is loaded, right? So let's go ahead and see what happens. I'm going to choose a file. I'm going to choose this file right here. Okay, I'm going to submit it and refresh. All right, so you can see that this image is pretty big. Let's go ahead and half the screen size. Let's refresh. And then you can see it's getting smaller, right? I do not, uh, I did not implement image resize on uh, window change, but the way you would do this is you would look for window add event listener resize, and then you would implement a timeout function in there. And once uh, the timeout for like 200 milliseconds is finished, you would want to go ahead and fetch a new, try to fetch a new image. All right, but you got to think about um, the cost that the user might pay with his internet. So I would uh, I, I would do some check that it's resizing from uh, small to big. But if it's resizing from big to small, don't fetch it. All right, so here we have our image. Again, if I go ahead and make it smaller, again, refresh, and there we go, the image is getting smaller. So what cost are we getting here? So imagine you have a block site, right? And you get this big image. Let's look at the network performance, right? So because it's local, it's loading instantly, but we're getting half a megabyte. And now imagine your blog has like 10 images. That is 10 megabytes. Sorry, five megabytes. My math, my math was off there. Now imagine they're viewing it on a phone over a network. That's going to take some time to load. Now if we make the screen size really small, so they're on their phone, we're only getting 74 kilobytes. So for 10 images, that is almost a megabyte, right? So the uh, so the trade-off in performance can be very big, and this is the main uh, reason why you would uh, want to look into using something like this. And again. Uh, based on the width the way we're getting it from the viewport the viewport can be different from this, uh, depending on the size it's going to be really hard to use javascript to uh, implement it in that simple method where we're just going to basically uh, attempt to get an image with uh, some random name from the static files right so it's very easy to implement the functionality on the back end when you can actually scan your directory or have a record stored or, you know, you can do some stuff like set available widths here and determine uh, this stuff here, but we don't talk about that. So what other interesting thing is you can do with this, uh, doing it this way? So imagine you have, uh, you own Instagram and you would like to display how many times a post was viewed where. Well, once you have the get image, once the section is called, you have access to your database. This is the back end. This is... Uh, the glorious place where you can basically increment your view count for that image and then send the appropriate information back to the clients and they can see how many times uh, their picture has been viewed clicked on downloaded etc okay and speaking of downloading here is another example 
I've set up here. So again, this is something similar to this file stream result. And if you will see that the file actually returns a file stream result. So really, we could actually implement this here, but then we would have to return the image name, which is not, we really don't need to return an image name if we're just streaming it off the route, all right? So let's go get ahead, click this button, and boom. Uh, what I'm doing is basically, again, I'm creating a link which posts to this uh, URL, and I'm passing the ID here, and I'm setting target blank, so it's opening a new window, and it's giving me my image here, all right? All right, and this is essentially it for this uh, episode. Thanks for watching. I uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Uh, if you'd like me to do an example on uh, some other uh, file formats, I'm gonna be doing one on video because that that can be a quite challenging one. I have struggled with that in, with my myself in the past, so I'm, I'm definitely gonna be covering that. But the, if you want the code for this, check the description. Uh, I, the code is gonna be linked to the same repository as the file upload. So if you haven't seen that episode, you can check out how I uh, set up an example for uploading files here. And if you haven't yet, subscribe, like, and as always, see you in my other videos.